Welcome to Board Prep Gastroenterology Batch 2. Today I will share 20 questions with you. I recommend that you pause the video after each question and provide the answer. In doing so, you're evaluating how much you really know. Let's begin. I'm continuing with problems of the esophagus. Question 1. Which test is performed to confirm the diagnosis of achalasia and to show aperistalsis and incomplete relaxation of the low esophageal spinster? Manometry. Question 2. What is pseudoachalasia? It is obstruction of the esophagus that is caused by malignancy. Question 3. What is the treatment of choice for achalasia? Surgical release of the low esophageal spinster by myotomy is the first line therapy. Alternative treatment includes pneumatic dilation and botulium toxin. Question 4. A corkscrew esophagus is noted on barium swallow. This is consistent with which condition? Diffuse esophageal spasm. Question 5. What is the treatment of choice for diffuse esophageal spasm? Calcium channel blockers are recommended first line treatment. Nitrate is a second line treatment. Question 6. Patients with motility disorder usually present with dysphagia to solids and the liquids, aspiration and the chest pain. True or false? True. Question 7. Identify the three most common organisms to cause infectious esophagitis. Candida albicans herpes simplex, and cytomegalovirus. Question 8. Which is the most common organism to cause infectious esophagitis in immunocompetent patients? Candida albican. Question 9. Identify the common medications that can cause esophagitis. Tetracycline, iron sulfate, bisphosphonate, potassium, NSAIDs, and quinidine. Question 10. How is eosinophilic esophagitis diagnosed? It is diagnosed by finding greater than 15 eosinophils per high power field on esophageal endoscopic biopsy. Question 11. A patient presents with dysphagia and curdy white plaques seen on endoscopy would most likely have which diagnosis? candidiasis or candida esophagitis. Question 12. How is eosinophilic esophagitis treated? It is treated with swallowed aerosolized corticosteroids. Question 13. Which tests would be performed on a patient who is suspected to have GERD, failed anti-reflux medication, and have a negative endoscopy. pH monitoring. Question 14. Describe how conventional pH monitoring is performed. A pH catheter is inserted transnasally into the distal esophagus and the pH is measured over 24 hours. Question 15. What is the initial medication to treat a patient in whom GERD is suspected? Proton pump inhibitors. Question 16. What is the next step in treating a patient with suspected GERD but did not respond to PPIs? Upper endoscopy. Question 17. Identify the immediate side effects of proton pump inhibitors. Headache, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and constipation. Question 18. Barrett esophagus is a complication of GERD. What is the physiologic change? The normal squamous epithelium is replaced by columnar epithelium with goblet cells. Question 19. 
Barrett esophagus is associated with a 30 to 50 fold increased risk for which cancer? Adenocarcinoma. Question 20. In which group of people is Barrett esophagus most common? White population. I have included two different answers for the same question. The question is, which is the first test to be done for esophageal dysphagia? One source says barium swallow is the first test if the source of the dysphagia is not known. Another source says upper endoscopy can be done first if the patient has a history of GERD. Well, thanks for watching, and remember, hard work pays off. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.